All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Um, can I take lessons learned in nitrogen management, apply them in 24, and find profit through nitrogen management, or am I going to push it a little too far and, and end up with another failure? Uh, you guys, comment below your nitrogen trials, successes, failures, wins, losses. Uh, what's your plan for your farm in 24? I, I love uh, reading your guys' comments. Um, you're very some some intelligent and funny guys out there um, it, This morning thinking about this video uh, Think back to 12 years ago. What did you use for data research? Um, I did not use the internet. I did not use YouTube or social media like today uh, So when we started moving away from conventional to soil health I um, I was in soil health for a lot, for several years before my brain started accepting that I'm in soil health um, because we had, we had started soil health before the five principles really came out and, and were popular. Um, you did not have all of the data on social media like you do today. It was Ag PhD, Corn College TV, and the magazines. And then you just tried to apply that stuff here. So uh, back when I was conventional farming, like everybody else, you were full tillage, half your uh, uh, nitrogen and sulfur were ahead of the planter, all your P and K was ahead of the planter. Late June, early July, your second half nitrogen and sulfur. Then, um, then, then in 15 was the first year I started strip tilling. Uh, I did have a coulter cart uh, years prior that I was side dressing with a coulter cart and that's eventually what became my strip till bar. Um, and that coulter cart, by, ban by getting rid of that second pass broadcast and going to that coulter cart, I saw some gains, didn't really quite understand, like not believing that, hey, that banding really is working. Uh, and then I was having problems with the coulters itself, uh, getting through the soil and residue. And you're like, ah, this is just a pain in the butt. But then in 15, that, that coulter cart became my first strip till bar in 15. And then we stripped. Uh, and then we saw a significant response to banding, but I could not, so 15, 16, 17, uh, I could not reduce my nitrogen. I was still very ingrained of that apply nitrogen, get a crop uh, connection. Uh, so we were still in that, you know, one or 1 1.2 to a bushel end credit ratio. Finally, in 18, we moved to Y dropping with the sprayer, got rid of broadcasting, and I'm like, I need to uh, take that step. And so I took that step. We knocked out quite a bit of the nitrogen and saw still great crop responses. We saw no negative response. And then in 2019, I did a trial. Uh, my mindset today versus my mindset then, uh, polar opposite. At that time in 19, I'm still a moron farmer. It's cheaper to buy more NPK than it is to do management. And so I, I, I looked at the results very differently. Um, so we did 100%, 75%, 50%, and 25% applied rates. Obviously, your 100% is your check. The 75% applied nitrogen still made like 95 or 98% of the yield. So I took out 25%. So instead of spreading 400 pounds, I spread 300 pounds. 100 pounds less per acre to carry around the farm to buy, to pay interest on, <coughs> and to refill. And I still made almost the same crop. At 50% applied, we still had 85% of the yield. Remember, at this point, there was no plant testing, there was no soil testing, there was no uh, fixing micronutrients, focusing on points of influence. At that time, I was still just an NPK farmer um, because that is the local wisdom we had. Uh, your local resources that you went to, uh, that, that was their advice, you know. <laughs> it, it was, yeah, but uh, nothing against them. It was just out of their wheelhouse and, and type things. 
Um, 50% applied nitrogen. So again, instead of carrying around 400, now you only carried around 200 pounds to the acre of urea. So you went twice as far on each spreader load, you went faster, and, and you borrowed that much less money, handled that much less product to get 85% of the same crop. At the time, that 15% of crop would have made more money uh, by buying the nitrogen to try to get you to the 100% level. Uh, now we look at it like, wait a minute, 50% of the cr uh, nitrogen made us 85% of the crop? Could that 15% be made up by correcting my molybdenum or my magnesium or uh, my boron, copper, zinc, iron, um, you know, type deal? 25% applied nitrogen still got us like 65% of the crop. Um, so again, instead of 400, now you're literally carrying 100 pounds of urea around the farm per acre, and you still got better than half of your yield. Uh, again, if we would have focused on timing, point of influence, correcting micro deficiencies, and, and maybe correcting some soil issues, um, could, you know, how about our calcium? What's our going on with our calcium? You know, them kind of things. How much further could that 25% have gone? <clears throat> now, so now, um, think about it. At that time in 2019, you did not hear anything about the Haney test. Uh, you didn't hear anything about sap testing, uh, plant testing. You heard some guys trying it. Um, but now we have all that stuff. So last year, the last couple years, we've been Haney testing and plant testing and foliar feeding, trying to figure out them points of influence, and we've seen some really good crop responses. So now, going into 24, uh, we know that every field is different. We're, we're, there is no more of this broad acre corporate industrial farming model anymore because now we can actually test and say, hey, this field's history is of legumes, cattle, grass, uh, late season. So we strip till we'll put in about half or a little better of half of our nitrogen credits for the year uh, in the strip till. And then we can come back and test. And so we come back and test and we plant test before V5, so before V5, we're doing a, a correction of our, our molybdenum, our calcium, iron, zinc, boron, copper, phosphorus, that kind of stuff. We get that corrected, pull a soil test, so then at that V6, V7, when we side dress, we can say, hey, this field, this field was legumes, grass, cattle. Uh, this field has a lot of nitrogen in the soil. The year is looking great. We got lots of moisture in the soil. There's some moisture in the forecast. Our stand looks good. The plant test comes back very high in nitrogen. I have 140 end credits in the soil. Uh, I, I'm good. I, I don't need any more nitrogen on this field. But this field, old sod, dead, non-functioning dirt type field. Uh, it's only got 70 or 80 end credits. Stand looks good. Uh, forecast, it's got the same good looking potential for the year. Uh, 80 is not enough to carry us through the year. So not only are we gonna apply the nitrogen we were planning on this field, we might borrow some nitrogen dollars from this field to bring over, uh, to really boost this field up. Um, depending on what that difference is. Uh, and maybe we end up with money in our pocket between the two fields. We didn't have to spend 100% of our nitrogen budget. And so not only did we bring this field, we applied extra to this field to bring it up to match this field that's already a rock star. Uh, we got money in our pocket besides. And so that, that is our goal in 24. Um, test, test, test. Uh, also in 24, I want to work with a drone guy. There's a lot of research out there that uh, after silking, when that ear is starting to fill, um, there's an opportunity, there's another point of influence back there um, that we could do a foliar feed with a drone on a small test plot, a couple acre test plot, and see can, can that late season foliar 
um, really help boost yields for us to the next level? Can a, can a 20 or $30 investment of, of some micronutrients and maybe some potassium, our soil is tough on potassium, so maybe some potassium when that plant is really trying to fill that ear, um, can we trigger a response to make us profit or are we just simply paying for a program or did we actually lose money? And so we have more testing in 24 to do. Uh, also with the soil testing uh, and the plant testing, uh, we have we, we need to do some uh, different rate trials in there uh, to see uh, how accurate was that soil test um, and to the final to, to relate it to uh, the yield. So in the in the winter of 24, we can say, hey, that field tested 130 uh, end credits. Uh, the zero applied made this yield, uh, then we applied some different rates and here's how the yield responded to that. So we can start to uh, give ourselves some more data to help manage in the future. And so guys, thank you very much for watching. I got to get to work. Uh, I'm getting behind every minute I'm standing here. I appreciate you guys. I thank you guys very much for support. Um, and so comment below, we'll see you next time.